Thanks for joining us on Time for Hope, a faith-based mental health program. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host. And as promised, I am being joined again today by Ricardo Sanchez, a Grammy-nominated and Dove Award-winning international worship leader, as well as a sought-out conference speaker and author. As Ricardo joins me again today, we're going to be continuing to discuss his book titled, It's Not Over, which offers a lot of hope for those who seek God's will for their life through a study of His Word and prayer while passing through a stormy season in life. Hope can lift us out of a pit of despair as we believe God is on His throne and pressing us forward in any situation because it's never over with God and His purposes for our lives. Stay with us. And Ricardo, there's an old saying, and I wondered why you didn't add it on the book. It's not over till it's over. <laughs> Yogi Berra, <laughs> the great, great quote. I, I'm not sure why we didn't add it. I think people, too many people expected us to add that, so we kind of steered away from that. I, I don't know. I just didn't think of it. Really, I don't see us. I don't see life over until it's over. Mm. Uh, that we're always, as you mentioned in our first show, climbing that mountain. Yes. Yeah. I think I've told my clients through the years as a counselor that uh, you reach summits, mm. uh, not the summit Very of the mountain, good. but you reach uh, intermediate summits where you get to rest for mm. a while. Absolutely right. And that's only preparing you for the next climb. <laughs> <laughs> Most people work to rest, but I think God's people need to learn how to rest to work. There's still so much going on. And even those who may have lost a loved one, you know, the, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with God. That as believers, our life never ends, that our life continues on this earth. And once it's done, there is a life everlasting with Jesus in heavenly places. So it's not over, regardless of how you see it. I like that bumper sticker. I don't like bumper stickers yeah. as a general rule, but I like that one that says, God's not finished with me yet. Oh, uh, that's good. That's a song <laughs> title, I think, somewhere. I'm yeah. sorry, singing that one. And um, he's never finished with us yeah, until so. he's finished. <laughs> uh, uh, until he's finished. And that's when he um, takes us home. Uh, you talk about the time that you received the news while you were in Jacksonville, Florida, about your son. And then when you finally did get home, uh, being in the waiting room, and I know what that's like. Like I've gone through some things in life where you wait in the waiting room, mm. especially if your daughter's having a baby, oh, believe wow. me. Yeah, now anxiety. they let you in there with them, yeah, but early right. on, yeah. that was not true. And uh, I can remember one was having such a, a hard time. It just oh. lasted forever. Mm. And the doctor was so kind mm. um, in calling down and asking for me, Is the grandmother, right? oh. and keeping me posted with what was going on and when she f finally had the baby he he uh he sent somebody down he said go get that grandmother and get her up <laughs> well, here he knows the power of a praying grandmother is what he knows <laughs> yes, most likely and, uh, so the waiting room mm. um and even in my own life right now i mm -hmm. feel like i'm in a waiting room in a particular situation mm. in my life yeah. to see what God's going to do. Yeah. I'm waiting to see what his next move is, what his next desire for me mm. is. And uh, and you bring it out in your book. Yes, ma'am. Waiting is hard to do, it's, isn't it? We're impatient people. We want it. <laughs> we, okay, our id. Uh, I'm going to Freud a little bit. Here. Oh, there you go. Our id is, I want what I want, and I, <laughs> I want, want it that. now. We're the microwave generation, the fast food pull up to the drive through and I want it now. We want our investments to prosper right now. But what we came to realize in the waiting room of struggle, in the waiting room of this process that the Lord had my wife and family go through, is one door had closed, no windows were open, and it's just hot in the hallway. It's so difficult. But I believe that how you wait can determine your fate, how you wait upon things. In fact, the Bible says in Isaiah, they that wait upon God shall renew their strength. But that word, we look over it so many times, is a verb. Waiting is a verb. And the picture that um, I see is how a waiter waits on a patron. In essence, God, I'm not going to sit here and let you do all the heavy lifting. 
I'm going to sit here and learn as much as I can about this process that I'm walking through, whether it be me smiling and me still lifting my hands in worship and in praise and receiving something free from you, or whether it's turning to somebody and communicating your heart to them. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Mm -hmm. And our testimony in that waiting room can actually help someone, if not even ourselves, overcome whatever obstacle that we're facing. Waiting is such a key element to your victory. How you wait, I believe, Dr. Frieda, can determine your fate. And I think of Joseph. It's the pit that qualified him for the palace. It was how he responded to the four walls of mud, how he responded to the anger and the vitriol of his brothers that wanted to, to, to destroy him. It was how he responded to Potiphar's wife. It was how he responded to Potiphar that ultimately got him in the most highest position in the land. So again, I believe the waiting room is not necessarily a process for others, but I believe the waiting room is a process that heaven is looking at us. It's a refining position. It's a position that God is molding us and creating us. But again, like we talked about last week, it's our own choice. It's if we're submitted to the process and allow God to begin to mold us, then we'll become more like God. But if we're submitted to our mind, our flesh, our will, our emotion, then that's what's going to come out. Well, when we think of the waiting room, I see it as a time uh, that God would have us get quiet, mm -hmm. another thing before mm -hmm. Him, and actually reflect and meditate mm -hmm. on uh, the situation and what I always taught when uh, change the question of why into what. Mm. What God am I to get out of this? What God are you teaching me? What so God good. do you want me to learn yes, absolutely. Uh, from this? I, I used to tell my clients, I've told them many a one, okay, so you're in the pit of depression. Drain it dry. <laughs> it's got something to offer you. That's so good. Uh, you know, whatever we're going through, let's drain it dry mm. uh, so that when it's over, uh, we can look back and see what where God has brought us mm. and what He taught us, brought and taught brought us and taught. Uh, uh, through the process as He moves us forward. Uh, and you talk about windows, mm. and as He moves us forward, I like Psalm 23. Mm. Uh, he's what's going to come out of come this. Yeah. He's going to lead us. He's going to lead us beside the still yes, waters absolutely. and into green the pastures. pastures. What do green pastures speak of? Oh man and life and, and freedom and I tell you but what's interesting to me even Dr. Uh, Frida is that the greener the grass the more fertilizer that's been on the grass so it's the more refining that goes on the greener you're going to be and even in that waiting it's, it's interesting because I say that exact thing in the book from getting to the why to the what is next God how can I use this situation for your glory how can I jump over the pit or the valley of why and get launched into God what's next how do I do that and we actually walk and talk about it in the book you you walk and talk about everything just about uh, in the book you talk about uh, the waiting room the strength of struggle mm. yes yes uh, when in Romans 5 3 mm. through 5 which I use so very often um, I believe it's the fifth chapter um, and the verses. There are three things are to come out of the mm. storms of life that God allows uh, and even sometimes orders, but he's not the author, as you mm, brought out, on, of absolutely. evil, okay? Uh, but he allows it sometimes for uh, to teach us something. But three things, mm. uh, endurance, mm. uh, character. He wants us to grow in character and hope. Three mm. things. What else could you want? Absolutely uh, right. That's when, beautiful. When it is over, uh, but it's only over for another season mm. to, to move into another uh, season. So you've got the strength of struggle. We, I say we grow strong spiritual muscles. Mm. What do you? Well, uh, listen, when we, and the reason we put that and what God taught us, um, the metaphor that God taught us was seeing our son Josiah who had just broken his neck and he had just come out of, out of surgery. 
um, hours after he got out of surgery, the nurse came in and started making him sit up. And uh, I get a bit emotional about it, but my son uh, groaned and cried a cry that only a grown man should cry. Uh, he was in so much pain. And my wife and I, who had been up for days praying and speaking life to our son, we were upset at the nurse. And as she had noticed and witnessed this process of us you know, being upset because she's hurting our son, she said, Mr. and Mrs. Sanchez, I don't want you to be discouraged. You have to understand the sooner your son sits up and fights through this pain, the sooner the healing process will begin. So there is a strength that can come from this struggle if you're submitted to it. Now, we had to watch our son endure some incredible pain, yeah. but what has produced is a stronger young man, not just physically, but I believe spiritually and mentally as well. I, I understand that, having had surgery several times, yeah, and that good. first, uh, and even after having a baby, and yeah. uh, so forth. Then, uh, it's, we're about to go out on a break, but we want to talk about the hot spots that are to be avoided mm -hmm. uh, during uh, the storm, or, or the, season, the, the dark season uh, that we're going through. And you've named things that can literally bring us down mm -hmm. if we're not careful. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we come back off break, we're going to pick up with these hot spots that are to be avoided. Satan takes it advantage of us when we are in a dark season That's right. That's exactly uh, or when right. we're going through a storm. And these are some of the things that uh, can happen to us. So I'm sure our viewers are going to want to know what to look for uh, before, uh, while it's not over. And we will be right back. It is said it's easy to trust God when things are going good. Of course, they add to this the admission that it's not so easy when times get tough. Allow me to pose this question. How do you know God can be trusted unless He sees you through some dark and lonely times? All of us will encounter tough times at some time during our lives. When the times are dark, when it appears there is no light at the end of the tunnel, when you can't seem to find your way, when there are many questions and few, if any, answers, where do you turn? Why not turn to God? Who is this God who can be trusted during tough times? He is the Almighty God with whom nothing is impossible. He is the omniscient or all-knowing God who knows all about where you are and what you are going through. He is the omnipresent or all-present one who can be everywhere at once. He is the God who can understand because His Son became one like you so that He could feel what you feel. The Son of God knew pain as no person ever has. He knew what it was like to be lonely and forsaken. While He hung suspended between heaven and earth, His own Father turned His back on Him. But he learned that this God could still be trusted. He raised him from the grave and saw him through to the other side of his pain and darkness. And he will do the same for you. So if you are presently passing through a dark season, you have no reason to give up. Instead, trust the Creator God to eventually turn things around or change or even transform you through the situation you are facing or struggling with. Resolve today that you will trust Him through the good times and the tough times. The path of tough times can lead you straight to Him. Believe what the psalmist related concerning this God. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. It is God who arms me with strength. We got a phone call out of the blue from a doctor we didn't even know that was a friend of the family and said, I spoke to the emergency room. I want you to know your son is going to be okay. And just that breath of hope of just going, God, you're so good. And hearing those words, your son is going to be okay. 
was one of those moments that you just exhale a sigh of relief. And, you know, Ricardo said it best later when we were reflecting on it all. It almost feels like we had just walked through a gauntlet of grace. And we were so overwhelmed with kindness and love from friends and family and church members. And I'll never forget there was a, a gal and her daughter that walked into the hospital one morning. And um, I saw them and just gave them a hug, just weeping. And, and she said, Jeanette, I want you to know that both my daughter and I had a dream last night, the same dream. And we woke up and we saw Josiah at the bottom of that pool and we saw an angel there picking him up and that angel said, it's not over. And we just knew, as Ricardo had said in sharing this story in this song, that there was a testimony out there for people who maybe feel broken, who feel like it's over, who you know, don't know where their hope is, that God is faithful and just and gracious and uh, Josiah is okay and he's gonna walk and he's doing amazing and all the doctors have said he's nothing but a complete miracle. If you, you may not have a broken neck, but you may have a broken heart. And I'm just here to say that Jesus can fix that and also that it's not over. We always appreciate your joining us on Time for Hope. My guest for today is Ricardo Sanchez. We're talking about his book, it's not over. And I'm going to go ahead and suggest that you prepare to order a copy of this book. I myself have so greatly appreciated it. And if you're going through a hard time or a dark season, uh, you will uh, be forever grateful that you could get your hands on this book, and I mean it, uh, you, Ricardo, I mean that. Now let's talk about these hot spots that yes. we're to avoid because we're vulnerable. Mm. That We are vulnerable, Satan knows it. Absolutely. He always right. attacks us at our most vulnerable <laughs> uh, time and uh, spot or whatever. Uh, so these things can, uh, he can come along and whisper and talk to us and cause things to happen that will cause us to fall for these hot spots mm. uh, that we are to avoid. Mm. And the first one, the scriptures are uh, actually explicit about, and that is bitterness. Mm. The, you know, we can be angry with God and he, he will listen to us yeah. and, and that's forgivable, mm. but not a bitter, we can't be Understood. bitter towards God mm. and we can't, we, uh, if we're bitter towards other people, it's going to hurt us worse mm. than them. That's so good. Well, you know, the Bible says that the enemy comes in to rob, steal and destroy. I don't think the enemy wants to play with us. I don't think the enemy wants to frustrate us. I believe the enemy's ultimate goal is to destroy us destroy. as children of God, as temples of God. Mm -hmm. And when we allow these hot spots to enter into our life, it gives the devil, our enemy, a foothold. Foot and what's interesting about bitterness and, and what we we started seeing would you know fall into ourselves because it's God, why did this happen to Josiah? Mm -hmm. Why did this happen to our son? Bitterness is is a tricky thing because you can't always see it. And I look at it as a root you know, that will ultimately bear fruit. We're dealing with, you know, well, he's just loud like his dad. Well, he's got a temper because he's a certain nationality or, you know, he's unforgiving because of this or that. But I believe those are fruits of a deeper issue and that's bitterness, how you can become so negative about the things of life, you know, even that God has given you that are such a blessing, but ultimately bitterness uh, gives the enemy who wants to destroy us a foothold in our lives. And you, it could be picked up on with people if mm -hmm. you're around them. Mm -hmm. It can be contagious, mm. uh, you know, uh, all kinds of things. And then the next one is a biggie. Yeah. I mean, a real big one, and that's unforgiveness. Mm. What in the world do we, I mean, it's so explicit that if we fail to forgive, God's not going to forgive, forgive us. us. That's mm. really scary. But also forgiveness takes its toll with us. It's not the other person that's suffering when we won't forgive them. So Guess powerful. who's suffering? We are. You know, I, I, unforgiveness is a judgment. We are judging people. We're playing God. We're playing God. And God's a jealous God. God doesn't like that. And, you know, for me, I've realized that 
when we're unforgiveness, a lot like bitterness, it is contagious. And I tell you this, and we were talking during the break, that God isn't always what we want. I don't always want to love. I don't always want to forgive. And some of us have experienced things in life where society would tell us, don't forgive. You don't have to forgive. But I tell you this, what I've realized through this process in writing this book, that though God might not always be what I want, God is always what I need. And God says to love even your enemies. God says, when you pursue me and your ways are pleasing to me, then I will make even your enemies at peace with you. Yeah. And I'm reckoning it to uh, Matthew 6, Seek ye first God's kingdom, and then, and then all, all these the things, things shall be added unto you. Yeah. And I believe unforgiveness is, what, like you said, a really big mountain to try to move on our own. And you know all that you're saying, the word surrender comes mm -hmm. to me. That we, whether we like what God's doing or allowing uh, or mm -hmm. what God is allowing uh, and, and working with us and trying to work out, uh, there must be that su surrender, mm -hmm. uh, giving up what we think mm -hmm. and receiving mm -hmm. and accepting mm -hmm. what God uh, wants yeah. from us. So it's a submissive will and uh, it's surrender. And he tells us, submit yourselves therefore to God and he will exalt yeah, you absolutely. in due season. Yes. In due season. In due season. <laughs> well, there's seed time and harvest. I look at in Genesis and so many times we just think we plant a seed, there's some time and then a harvest. We say seed time harvest. But in the things of God and in God's timing and system, sometimes for us, it's seed time and then a harvest. So yeah. God's system and his process isn't always like ours. I want to move on real quick. We're running out of time. Mm -hmm. Worry is another one. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave it. Uh, they can go to Matthew 5, mm -hmm. uh, 6 and verses 27 through 31. We are to trust God instead of worry. It's, it's so just, that, uh, just that simple. Mm -hmm. want to move on um, to uh, something that Jesus said in John 14, uh, verses 12 through 16. Very true. Truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing. Mm. Are we doing the works uh, <laughs> that Christ did? And they will do even greater mm. things than these because I am going to the Father and he's going to ask the Father so forth to send his spirit and so forth and he'll give you another advocate. Then I want to move over because we want to close out with the whole idea of hope. Mm. Uh, it's not over. Yes, and that's uh, because it's not over, hope has this big place in any situation. Yes. And you name six features of hope that, that I want to put out uh, to our viewers. Hope can be difficult to control. Mm. Uh, hope affects the way you think or perceive events. And we have to train our brain. And you put some research in here Absolutely. that when we hope, it, the endorphins uh, rise in our brain Changes and, our and ra raises our mood, yeah. our, our, our spirit. I thought that was really good. Thank I appreciated you. that. Yes, hope affects the way you behave. If, you, if you're hopeless, you're going to be disgruntled, hard to get along with. You're going to have a sad face. You're going to be uh, depressed. Mm -hmm. Hope motivates behavior. It determines how we're going to behave, increases persistence, which we need our resilience that's Absolutely. being talked about a lot today, and enables one to go on, mm -hmm. move forward as we've been talking about. And hope is a common, universal experience. What would we do without it? Okay. And then finally, you say this, and I love it. We can stay afloat in the boat of oh, hope. Oh, yes, we uh, we're not going to go down, are we? We're, oh, not, going, yeah. we're not going to go down. Not with Jesus in, in the not, boat. Not with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. being our hope. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Where are we placing our hope? Mm -hmm. Who are we placing our hope so in? Good. Who's, uh, you know, who's the boat, as it were, mm -hmm. that's keeping us afloat? Great questions. Yeah. So if we're in the boat with Christ, yes. as the disciples were yes. when they thought they were going to sink, mm -hmm. guess what? It's impossible. It can't happen, can it? <laughs> it, it cannot happen. Uh, so we can stay afloat if we're in the boat with 
Jesus. Amen. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Ricardo, for coming Thank for you, your Dr. book. Thank you and it's been. Uh, Lord bless you, yes, your ministry, uh, your family, you. and um, we um, write another one, let us know. <laughs> yes, How about absolutely. that? Thank and, you, and then I have something to share with you before we close out totally. I have a prayer request from one of our viewers. Dear Dr. Frieda, please pray for my 17-year-old granddaughter who has cancer. She was in remission, but it has recently come back. It is fast-growing cancer, and doctors are not giving very good prognosis. Uh, her school friends have forsaken her, and she's not allowed to participate in school activities. Her mother is also having panic attacks due to the stress. Please pray for her healing and for our family. Be assured we've already done that. We don't know that God's will is for her to be healed, but we do know that God's will is uh, for you to be comforted, for him to comfort you and console you and sustain you through this. Just remember, it's not over, uh, uh, as our guest has written about. And then I have a, a note of encouragement. Dear Dr. Frieda, I really love the Time for Hope program. Thank you. I appreciate that. I watch it every time I get a chance. Time for Hope is so wonderful. Well, hope is wonderful. So as long as we're here talking about hope, uh, then um, we, uh, we can be encouraged and I encourage you in the Lord to realize when you're in a situation, God's working something out in your life, submit, surrender, and embrace what it is because he's going to move you on to higher ground or to greener pastures. A free fact sheet that contains additional information about today's topic is available upon request from our ministry. You can also receive a copy of today's resource for $13 plus $3 shipping and handling. To receive the free fact sheet or our guest's book or both, you may call us at 1-800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. When you call or write, please prayerfully consider a donation to our ministry. Our ministry's mission is to offer hope to discouraged and hurting people. As we continue to give out messages of hope, you can become a member of our team by sending us a financial gift of any amount. When you send your gift to support Time for Hope, you are joining us in offering hope to many viewers who might believe there is no hope for their situation. And you're also enabling us to inform and inspire some viewers to expand our mission as they learn and in turn can minister more effectively to hurting people around them. Join us next week on Time for Hope as Dr. Cruz discusses another insightful topic. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is time for hope.